What's up, beautiful people? Today I'm going to explain stuff you should definitely know about Native American societies before the white people came. To start, there are two things most peeps get wrong about American history. First, just because you are learning about U.S. history in school it does not mean you need to have the word American in the title. Come on, textbook companies. The second thing is, the first people to colonize the Americas were not the Pilgrims, Disney hunks, or even Columbus, but rather the first people to colonize the Americas came from Asia. Way back in the day, anywhere between 36,000 and 14,000 years ago, people began migrating from Asia to the Americas. They did this by crossing the Bering Strait land bridge that was formed between Asia and North America during an ice age. Now this migration did not happen all at once, but over thousands of years, native populations migrated and settled across the vast expanse of the Americas. Side note, it's not until you've done a road trip across America that you truly appreciate how big this country is. As the migration and settlement took place, native people developed distinct and increasingly complex societies. They spoke different languages and developed many different cultures. They developed the distinct and increasingly complex societies that you see on the map by adapting to and transforming their diverse environments. We got it all in the Western Hemisphere. Too much rain, too little rain, plenty of fertile soil, spots where the soil is frozen most of the year, you name it, we got it. What is important to know, in spite of the simplistic, might I dare say, racist ways Native Americans have been depicted in popular culture and by various sport teams, both prior to and after European contact, there were different and complex Native American societies throughout the Western Hemisphere. Now we use the term pre-Columbian to refer to societies in the Americas before the arrival of Columbus. But please note, the arrival of Columbus and other European settlers does not mean all these pre-Columbian societies are suddenly gone from the Americas. Native people and culture are still very much a part of the American story, and we will be seeing this story play out throughout many of these videos. Now that you know of the presence of different and complex societies before European contact, one of the most remarkable things about this diversity is the innovations in agriculture and the ripple effect it had on native societies throughout the continent. The spread of maize cultivation from modern day Mexico or corn north into what is now the American Southwest and elsewhere allowed nomadic hunting gathering societies to transition to settled agricultural societies. It supported economic development and helped social diversification among societies. I mean, of course, maize cultivation spreads northwards. Why rely on wandering around looking for food when you can grub on this deliciousness? Maize became the main food source for many of the tribes in the Southwest. Now, if you've ever been to the American Southwest, you know it is hot as hell. So the native people needed to develop a way to irrigate the exceptionally dry land. In what is now present day New Mexico and Arizona, the Pueblo people and others crafted adobe structures and developed complex irrigation methods to grow maize and also other crops such as squash and beans. Adapting to the environment was a reality on the Great Plains as well. As a result of a lack of natural resources and fertile soil, the Sioux and other tribes of the Great Plains relied on a nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle. Part of the reason they were hunters and gatherers was because of the importance of hunting bison. You had to be mobile to hunt these bad boys. They're not just sitting there waiting for you at Whole Foods. Tribes on the East Coast, especially along the Atlantic seaboard, will be the tribes that the English and the French colonists will first encounter. And the Eastern part of North America will have a lot of different tribes and many of these societies developed mixed agricultural and hunter-gatherer economies that favored the development of permanent villages. Basically, many of these tribes developed a mixed way of life with farming for part of the year when it's not super cold, as well as hunting, gathering, and even fur trapping. Tribes such as the Huron and Iroquois tribe formed political alliances and trade networks with neighboring Native American tribes, and later on would be bitter rivals with one another. Remember, indigenous people were not a monolithic group. They spoke different languages and occasionally caught beef with one another. Keep the Huron and the Iroquois in mind, especially when the showdown happens in 1754 between the French and the British in the Ohio River Valley. Foreshadowing. Up in the Pacific Northwest, fishing and furry animals in the forest provided native people plenty of food, not to mention the vast resources of the ocean. And finally, farming in the Mississippi River Valley allowed for large settlements of 
thousands of people to form. In this image by an artist, you can see the homes and mounds of the Cahokia people around the year 1150. At this time, the population is estimated to have been around 20,000 people living in these settlements, and that is more than what lived in London at that same time. In short, history of the Americas began way before 1492. Historians estimate about 50 million people were already in the Western Hemisphere upon Columbus's arrival, and about 5 million native people are living in what is North America. In our next video, I will talk about European exploration in the Americas. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Peace.